the Silver Spring Master Plan. And Nancy, given your experience on the County Council and the, and the County Planning Board, um, what do you think about the goals that were established by the County Council to encourage, you know, uh, <laughs> green cover? Um, I, my, 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 uh, my script says green core, uh, but it should be cover and um, minimizing st stormwater runoff and incentivizing uh, new de development near uh, transit hubs. Are those uh, all good things? Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're achievable. Uh, well, the question is how much is left to develop in Silver Spring? Well, it's not all built out, but a good portion of it has uh, reached its limit. And, you know, they're dealing with uh, what options there may be going into the future. Remember, a master plan is like a 25 year long, old docu long document. So a lot can happen between now and when it gets actually implemented. What's interesting about the plan, it also identifies a lot of things that planning really can't control, like encouraging small businesses and things of that nature that really need the engagement of the county government, uh, which the planning board is not. They're a separate organization. Uh, you know, it encourages, uh, uh, I think, 35% uh, green roofs on new construction. Uh, incentives for using uh, public, redeveloping public parking garages. This is stuff they've been doing all along. What's interesting is that they've expanded the scope of the plan a little bit. I used to live right by downtown Silver Spring and it expanded the, um, the borders of their conversation right out to where uh, Cedar Street in that part of uh, Silver Spring. So they're encouraging a little bit more mixed use around the edges. I don't know how I feel about that. But the question is, how likely is that to occur? Probably not much. Maybe have more in-home doctor's offices and things of that nature, which they've always had in Silver Spring. What's interesting is that I have not heard a word about this until I read about it in Bethesda Beat the other day. And I think that's, that's a good sign that it's not going to face any, uh, any difficulty in getting approved. Uh, usually, uh, well, the, usually the council doesn't approve anything that's hard before primary. Uh, I don't think this is going to be so hard that they can't approve it and move forward. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, the, the, the Mark, the one striking um, art line, and I think it was Bethesda Beat and analysis was, was that there was no mention of Thrive Montgomery 20, yeah. 2050. In fact, it had been removed from the plan. You, you've got a minute to comment on it. <laughs> uh, well, I think that in and of itself speak, speak volume, although of course it, the common uh, denominator to all of that is an increase in density in, in key areas. Um, it's, well, that becomes kind of a whole nother conversation because there are limits to the density that we can achieve in Montgomery County, even in those high density areas. Uh, to support public transportation, and um, we, we, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. But uh, yes, uh, Mark, we need more. We need more roads, Mark. Exactly. Well, we yeah. Well, we do. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it, listen. I mean, one of the challenges with public transportation, do a metric of how long does it take you to get up to available jobs, uh, and that's a challenge. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I and I and I think you know another negative or another effect of the pandemic was people have retreated to their cars as opposed to mass transit because you know they they want the safety and security of being in their own own vehicle. We got we got us we got to go. Carolyn is 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 flashing the pink sign at me. We got to turn off. So stay tuned for parting shots. We come right back. 